Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of AutoCAD Professional Dialogues. We caught up with Mr. Josh Weiss, the president of Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. We asked Josh about how Hexagon is enabling the automotive industry in its endeavor to accomplish quality in its production as well as how it is catering to the demand for ADAS and autonomous driving solutions with its simulation tools. Come, let's listen in. Um, Hexagon as a whole is a large publicly traded company, I think close to 23,000 plus employees now, over 5 billion in revenue. And how we're organized is in very distinct industries with automotive being one of them. The whole vision of Hexagon as a whole and in automotive is a connection of the digital world and the real world. And so what we mean by that is what you plan, what you do, what you simulate in the digital world, and then fusing that with what's happening in the real world and closing all those reconciliation loops um, that you can. And so even concepts like you hear in the mainstream market and social media, like the metaverse, applying that to the industrial world like automotive, et cetera. And with that, it's a combination of hardware, sensors, devices to capture the real world and all its different permutations, and then software to take that information, process it, design it, et cetera, uh, improve on it as well. And so within automotive, it's essentially that our whole goal is to connect what automotive OEMs or even suppliers, as we penetrate down into the OEM ecosystem, can design, can simulate, can plan all their different parts, all their different vehicles, et cetera and then combining that with the different types of mechanisms to capture that throughout the production life cycle and the entire value chain with a big focus on quality. It all really goes about the quality, productivity, and other kind of key tenants and value drivers for our customers. And so at a high level, that's kind of how we service the automotive industry and how it fits into the broader Hexagon strategy. We're, we're evolving our portfolio and our technology, just like the automotive industry is evolving. So a lot of focus on automotive has been on EVs. And so we're really becoming the domain expert in concentrating our technology and all the different features and functions and sensors and others in the EV market to really specialize in that end-to-end -end workflow and how to maximize the productivity and quality of EVs. So that's just one example, but autonomous driving is another example just new car design concepts and all of that. So really as the automotive industry is changing, we're basically essentially developing the technology to enable that change and do it in the most efficient way for our customers. I think automotive manufacturing in general and everything is on this digitalization journey. Like some call it industry 4.0, et cetera. Um, if anything, I think the pandemic helped accelerate a lot of those different trends. Every single one of our technologies, whether it's hardware, software, et cetera, is connected. It needs to be cloud or mobile enabled. It needs to be IoT and connected, like I said. And then data and harnessing that data is also becoming a key driver of it. And so we call that kind of smart devices, smart technology, smart applications, all of it being connected in that ecosystem, which again goes back to our customers and what their needs and wants are as well and so the manufacturing industry is also in that journey and our technology is there to help them digitize to digitally transform to drive reconciliation and continuous processing through throughout their entire value chain um, so it's a really good fit on terms of how we're shaping our portfolios to meet those needs and then how our technology is helping them digitally transform aligned with industry 4.0 in the manufacturing space um, one thing with india you mentioned as well and i think this is also coming out of kind of post post pandemic and other trends is supply chains across the world are completely being redesigned. There's a lot of different shifts in not just where OEMs are producing and manufacturing those end vehicles, but also all the suppliers as tier one, tier two, and tier three suppliers as well. And India is positioned incredibly well, I think. And as you probably can read every other day in the newspaper, there's just more and more of that manufacturing that is moving here, not just to serve India as an end market, but also globally uh, and abroad. And so we're really excited about that. We've already seen it happen in the past couple of years and it just keeps to, or it seems to keep accelerating as, there, as, this, as these supply chains are being redefined. Today, I think it's right around 5%, but what really excites us again is that potential and the shift that we're seeing. And I draw lots of analogies to what we saw as a company in China going back 15, 20 years ago, where it was probably an equal size uh, as a percentage of revenue for Hexagon as a whole. But today, China represents almost a third of Hexagon, or maybe even slightly more than a third. 
And a lot of the same kind of base ingredients that we saw that drove that and fueled that growth for Hexagon and many other companies, we see that now in India. And that's in part why we're gearing up and investing and putting all the right and final pieces of the puzzle in India as we speak. Yeah, we're really optimistic. I would say not even this decade, some are saying this century as well, because it really looks like it's got the right ingredients and many are thinking um, near-term, mid-term and long-term about the potential here. Some of, I think a lot of it gets fueled by that end consumer, end customer demand. And so India with a growing population base still, a relatively young labor force and et cetera, is gonna fuel lots of consumption in itself as an end market. And then also I think certainly as a key supplier to support the rest of the global markets as well. So it's kind of twofold the way I see it. Um, but one of the just kind of fundamental drivers with the supply chains being redefined is now the automation capabilities they have in their manufacturing plants and their own operations that they didn't have before. And so India as an end market and end consumer of automotive vehicles, et cetera, having being that physically close to your customer is absolutely key as it helps you optimize freight, duties, logistics, shipping, and all those other elements, plus spare parts and everything else going to that. So I think that's, that's one thing. And then India is very competitive from a global point of view, having access to talent, and the workforce that you need to run a lot of these different operations and, um, and just from other types of factors that globally, these products that they can produce in India will have markets in other parts of the world for sure. Yeah, I, th I think for one thing, it's not new per se. Lots of different sectors have gone through different levels of automation. It's just becoming more sophisticated it's being able to be done in more complicated manufacturing environments than say the processing industry or the textile industry and others that have already seen it. So I like to think of it as not replacing jobs, but as reskilling or repurposing jobs. You still need to service those machines, those robots, et cetera. It just requires a different kind of skill set and domain knowledge. And so the more that you can kind of reskill and repurpose those jobs to help support it, it does create a win-win kind of ecosystem that helps also raise the overall standard of living and all the other factors, which usually is, be is beneficial for um, the economy and the well-being of the citizens as a whole. And so um, we've seen it happen, like I said, in other industries, and now it just kind of seems to be percolating with more and more capabilities uh, upwards up the, the kind of value chain. It's a pretty even split. It's about 50-50 today, um, not just in simulation, but we also have computer-aided manufacturing software, we call it production software. We have enterprise platforms, which are the, the connectivity layer plus the reporting and visualization of all the data. So all in our software business is about 50-50 to our quote hardware business. But even hardware has embedded firmware, has software that runs on it and all the other elements. So it's not so clear cut, but in general, I think 50-50 is a good rule of thumb okay. to use. Yeah, we have a couple major R&D development centers already today that support global R&D operations across Hexagon. I think all in it's over 2,000 plus uh, employees um, by latest count, and that's been going up by at least a 10 to 20% um, growth rate over the past couple of years. And again, just keeps accelerating. I think now that we're through the pandemic and some of the challenges there, it just continues to accelerate. And so we're excited because that really helps us scale and helps us scale again with a talented workforce and all the other elements that we're looking for and addressing it and being on the forefront on innovation. And so I do expect that to continue to grow, um, but we're also looking at it from an overall operational footprint as well. So R&D is kind of one area, but we also have manufacturing of our own products. We have operations to run our different daily business activities and et cetera. And so we're also looking at how we can scale that up to support not just again, the local kind of domestic market here in India, but our global worldwide operations.